dear all, and uh, welcome to this uh, lecture on quality in career guidance. Uh, my name is Erik Hagaset Haug, uh, and I work at the Inland Norway University of Applied Sciences. Uh, in this lecture, I will focus on quality inquiry guidance and very brief uh, about me who is giving this lecture. Um, as you can see, I've been a guidance practitioner for several years before I started at the university at Lillehammer. And both in practice and as an academic, uh, I've been uh, involved in different projects, different research concerning quality uh, and innovation in career guidance services. Uh, and in my some of my publications, you can see that I put a specific emphasis on um, both understandings of the concept of quality in career guidance but also uh, understandings of career guidance in different contexts and the need to be aware of how the different contexts um, uh, influence different understandings. So in planning this lecture, I decided to have uh, these uh, main topics to be covered. Uh, I'm planning uh, to have a brief overview of the concept of quality and career guidance. Uh, I will focus on quality assurance, but also continuously quality development and try to um, explain why I think it's important to have a distinction between those two concepts. Uh, and then as said uh, in the introduction, uh, I will focus on the importance of a context resonant quality framework which is a concept from um, McMahon, Patton and Watson. Uh, and how uh, the context resonant quality framework uh, can and maybe should be developed uh, to increase uh, the utility of it in developing good career guidance services in different contexts. So, um, if you look at the concept of uh, quality, the concept quality, and especially quality in career guidance, if we start with, with quality, we can look at the Oxford Dictionary, who defines quality as the standard of something as measured against other things of a similar kind, or the degree of excellence of something. Uh, and the last paragraph uh, I will come back to later. Uh, when it comes to degree of excellence. And of course, in, in this setting, something uh, is uh, seen as career guidance. Um, we can see uh, similarities uh, when it comes to more concrete uh, definitions concerning quality in career guidance from Hooley and Rice in their publication. Uh, where we see that they describe quality assurance in career guidance as a range of techniques that can be used to ensure consistency in the way that activities are approached. And in my own writing, I, I often used this model uh, who uh, it sort of uh, combined uh, the different definition, both from the Oxford Dictionary and the one from Julian Rice, uh, where you can see that uh, I use the, the phrase outcome quality, uh, meaning the degree of excellence uh, measured against a standard. Uh, and there we find the degree of excellence from, from, the, from the definition at uh, the, the prior page. Um, that's the outcome, that, what we are, that is what we are hoping to achieve. But at the same time, we have to pay focus to what should be done to make uh, the expected excellence actually happened. And what makes it excellent? 
And in my writing, I often use uh, uh, structural quality and procedural quality as the concepts, where structural quality, uh, that, that is about the organization of the service, how it is delivered, structured, um, both at the regional, but also uh, at the national level. Uh, that's, that's kind of the framing we work inside of. Um, but as you saw in the definition from Huli and Rice, uh, the techniques, what we actually do in the guidance process is of course of great importance. And in my conceptualization, that's concerning procedural quality, which is the quality of the methods, the approaches used in guidance. And by this, we, we can see that the structural quality uh, and the procedural quality uh, adds up to the preferred excellence measured against a standard. And well, so far, <laughs> so good. Um, because measured against some standards is an issue both me and especially uh, a colleague from Malta, who is known by many of you, Ronald Sultana, has written quite a lot about. And the concept of, of thinking of quality in career guidance as a complex and contested concept um, is something I would like to emphasize in uh, the next couple of minutes. Uh, in this quotation from Ronald Sultana, we see that as you say, if you scratch below the surface, we discover that we have different views about what quality really is. This is likely to depend on who we are, our social backgrounds, the evalu evaluative criteria we use, past experiences, and so on. And most importantly, different people have different expectations and standards. And this implies that there's a huge need, in my opinion, uh, for an awareness on different underlying understandings of the concept of quality inquiry guidance before actually creating or recreating or further developing uh, existing uh, frameworks. And uh, with the words of Julian Rice, we can see that, yeah, uh, quality systems are not neutral. They are tool that lends power to particular groups, privileges, certain sorts of practice and certain kinds of outcome above others. So going back to the model of the structural, procedural and outcome quality, uh, they're often or always different views on what should be the outcomes, what would be the preferred procedural uh, quality or the techniques, the methods, the approaches to use, and also different views on uh, how to structure a good career guidance service. In their writing, Julian Rice emphasized that the issues of quality often are conceptualized and addressed uh, in different ways uh, among countries even inside of countries in different contexts or regional context uh, for policy and praxis. Uh, and as they say uh, in their uh, writing, quality assurance is an attempt to provide a framework against which policy and praxis can be checked. And just very briefly, uh, I include their uh, conceptualization of four approaches to quality assurance inquiry guidance, which I think is important for you who are watching this video to have in mind and reflect on what kind of uh, approaches to quality assurance might fit in my context. Uh, and if there's already a, a framework developed, uh, can we recognize uh, that as one of these four approaches. The four approaches um, 
they call a regulatory, advisory, organic, or competitive approaches. Uh, and coming from Norway, uh, who just recently developed a lifelong uh, quality assurance um, system, uh, we, we, have, we have had quite a lot of reflections on what kind of framework should we build up? And now that we actually got the framework, uh, where did we end up? And in my view, I would say that the Norwegian approach to quality uh, based on both cultural uh, and other um, issues concerning the Norwegian society, uh, we are at number two, the advisory approach. Uh, in the Norwegian uh, framework for quality uh, assurance, uh, we have quite a lot of recommendations we have examples of good practice, uh, but it's stated very clear that it's up to the different sectors, it's up to the different uh, areas. For example, if you work in a school context, there might be different areas to focus on, both on the structural quality side and the procedural side, and maybe also uh, what should be the preferred outcomes than if you work in a public employment service. So when we talk about things or this kind of quality systems being context sensitive, uh, it's also important to think about um, not only the national or regional part of it, but also what kind of sectors are you aiming for. And given the mandate for the Norwegian uh, framework to be a cross-sectoral national lifelong framework. Uh, it was, well, I would say quite obvious that it, it had to be uh, advisory with recommendations uh, that could unite us as a community as a whole, but at the same time had an opening uh, for uh, different uh, approaches uh, depending on what kind of sector and who the actual target group would be. But as I say, I, I will recommend that all of you who are watching this video uh, do a reflection on what kind of approach do we have in my country at the moment, or uh, if you are at the stage of trying to build up a system, what would you say could be the most appropriate system uh, that would match uh, the 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 different um, understandings of quality, but also the more fundamental areas concerning how does this society look like. If we go a bit further, uh, I would like to have a a, a short focus on. Uh, the distinction which I've written quite a lot about, uh, about quality assurance and continuously quality development. In my opinion, these concepts uh, sometimes uh, get mixed up, but I argue that there's an important uh, distinction to be made. And I try to use um, uh, the following uh, to, to, to make this distinction. Uh, when it comes to quality assurance, in my opinion, we often talk about, are we doing things right? Uh, and we look at what are the stated objectives for career guidance in my organization? Again, going back to the model uh, I presented in the beginning, we can, we can talk about what are the preferred outcomes of guidance for my organization. Uh, and then uh, have some kind of evaluation concerning whether or not we have achieved the objectives through how we are organized, which is the structural quality, or uh, how uh, the content methods we have chosen actually work. And then we talk about the procedural quality. And of course, uh, this is very important part of quality um, focus in a country or region. 
At the same time, I argue that we also have to have a focus on what I prefer to call a continuously quality development, where we don't ask if we do things right, but we ask, are we doing the right things? In my opinion, that's a different question concerning the same more overall focus on quality, where we actually, as I put in, scratch below the surface, uh, which build on the quotation from Sultana, uh, with the importance of actually scratching below the surface on what might be the understandings concerning quality in guidance. As you can see, in the main difference, and also um, this is presented as a, a, a cyclical model, uh, we, we, we need both. But when it comes to continuously quality development, uh, what, what, what is added is the first question, where I ask you to include question like, what are the key issues career guidance in my organization are set to solve? And then how does the representation of key issues affect the objectives for career guidance in my organization, which you find as the number one in the quality assurance part of this model? And further, do we achieve the objectives through how we are organized and the content methods we have chosen? And this emphasis on the key issues career guidance are set to solve uh, can be exemplified through a model developed in another uh, European project led by Hughes and Carson uh, back in 2018, uh, where one of the tasks in the project was to look at what are the actual expected areas uh, of outcome when it comes to career guidance in school. And I use this model from, from their report as an example of the many potential problem representations or expected areas of excellence, if you go back to the Oxford Dictionary model. Here we can see that it's divided into the, the outcome might concern that we want something to be increased, we want something to be improved or decreased. And for me, this has been quite a helpful model in trying to, if we go back to this, what are the key issues career guidance in my organization are set to solve? Um, in some countries, this is quite clear in, uh, in national governmental uh, papers, but very often it's also quite um, abstract. It's not that clear what the concrete key issues is for career guidance. Again, going back to Norway, uh, we, we see uh, many similarities with, with many of the points in, in this model, uh, where in the national documents we find uh, quite a lot on stuff to be improved through the service of the school career guidance service. Uh, higher self-esteem, higher well-being, um, higher understanding of career decision making and so on which is focusing on the individual, the, the pupil. At the same time, uh, there's a focus on the system uh, that needs to be improved. That might be some of the uh, expected areas of excellence. Uh, for example, quality of career provision. Uh, then if you look at, okay, uh, what might be the potential targets for career guides in school, uh, we, on a social and uh, societal level, uh, we find, for example, access, increased access to employers and experiences of work, uh, increased retention levels, uh, access to job earnings, which is quite other levels than the individual levels. And also when it comes to decrease, of course, in Norway, as in many other European countries, for example, the, the numbers of uh, not in education, employment or training, the needs uh, to decrease those numbers are given uh, from, from the government 
to uh, career practitioners in school and so on. My main point is that here is a quite a lot of key issues. And again, I will uh, ask you all uh, to reflect on uh, this question one before uh, both developing services at the local regional level. But if your task is to develop quality framework, for example, it's very important uh, to meet the need Ronald Sutana talks about oh, scratching below the surface uh, to, to ask this first question as a parallel process of this focus on quality assurance. And all of this uh, comes back to the, the third uh, area in this presentation, which I talk about being uh, this context resonant quality approach. Um, based on this argumentation uh, I've given so far, I, I, I would say that an awareness of the need to grant career guidance approaches in the specific specificities of economic, social and cultural realities is needed to secure that the action taken resonates the specific issues in a given context. The matching between what we do and the context we are trying to do it uh, is extremely important. Uh, and it has to be adjusted, it has to be customized, although looking at all the different uh, best practices from different countries, that's really good, that's really important, but still we have to adjust, we have to customize uh, to actually make it fit to our uh, specific context in my point of view. And as said, this is contextualized as being context resonance. And if you talk about frameworks, quality frameworks, it implies taking a framework in context perspectives that considers complexity and avoids oversimplification of social structures and mechanisms that potentially affect the usefulness of it. Finally, I have some recommendations based on this short video lectures. Uh, at the last page, you will find references to, to the main articles this uh, presentation is built on with more input uh, on on the topics covered. Um, but again, with inspiration from, from Tristram Hooley, um, a framework or a system for quality uh, cannot just be written down. Uh, if it's going to have an impact, both on an individual and societal level, it needs to be implemented and governed carefully. It needs to build on lessons learned from other countries and theoretical contrib contributions on the complexity of quality as a concept, but also combined with a sustained awareness of the need to be context resonant for national, regional, or local characteristics. And at the, as a last point, the further development should be based on a so-called co-creative measures. The last point, uh, again, can be taken as uh, from a Norwegian point of view or even a Nordic point of view. Uh, as you see in my further reading list, together with uh, colleagues, uh, we, we have done a book recently, uh, where we focus on setting Nordic career guidance in context. And here we find that this uh, building a system together approach, which is uh, meant by this co-creative uh, measure, uh, the last point. Uh, it meets, it, it meets uh, the need in the Nordic countries on both how to implement, but also have a sustained system for quality and guidance. If this approach uh, fits the other context you are a part of, again, that's up to you to reflect on. Hopefully this short lecture has given some more food for thought. Um, 
giving you some ideas on areas to reflect on in developing good career guidance systems uh, in your countries. Thank you for your attention and have a nice day.